the more a disease is generalized, the more we tend to think is not a disease, is a trait. This is the normalization process of a disease. We should not fall in this trap of thinking that allergies are normal. Like, isn't normal to be fat, diabetic or having acne. It's easier to blame our genes or God than to have the courage to learn and make the life changes that we need to do. I know there are many people that don't want to make any changes in, in their lives and prefer to take medications and move on from suffering to suffering. But there are those who want to learn and evolve. The allergic reaction. The presence of an allergenic substance for us activates the B cells that transform into plasma cells and begin to produce type E antibodies. These antibodies instigate mast cells to produce histamine. Histamine is an immune defense response hormone against the outside world. It increases external sensitivity, putting us on alert. Among other actions, it makes us sneeze, have more mucus discharged from the nose or eyes, and increase the need for itching. This serves to remove what bothers us. These reactions are defense response mechanisms to something external. But why do we overreact to something so harmless? The immune system has two main types of response, coordinated by the T cells or T lymphocytes. Th1 and Th2. Th1 activates a cellular immune response based on cell attack. Th2 activates a humoral immune response based on antibody attack. People prone to allergies have a predominance of Th2 type immune response. They are out of balance because they have too much Th2 than Th1. There are several causes for this, but one, one of the most important of all is intestinal health. The mucosal immune system protects us against the outside world and is very important for our natural immunity. The mucosal immune system has its operative center in the gut. There, our channels coordinate all our immune response and one of those actions is coordinating the Th1 versus Th2 regulation. This immune system is influenced by the microbes that live in the gut. And while the beneficial bacteria encourage a proper balance, many bacterial and yeasts increase Th2 response. Thus, dysbiosis, a bad intestinal flora, can lead to a loss of tolerance to the outside world. Gut health is important to our immune system. Let's look now to the possible causes. Food. Not all dysbioses cause constipation or diarrhea. Sometimes there are few intestinal symptoms hiding an imbalanced intestinal flora that leads to a Th2 immune response. The modern diet, rich in sugar and dairy products, helps to stimulate the growth of bacteria and yeasts that were rare in our belly in ancient times. The lack of antioxidants that lower histamine and calm our immune system doesn't help either. Antibiotics The use of antibiotics is a Russian roulette, according to Michael Gerson, neuroscientist, author of the book Second Brain. It can lead, for example, to a microbial imbalance that generates more Th2, more intolerance and more allergies. Infections. One of the causes, little known by many, is intestinal parasites. Intestinal parasites can lead to increased allergic symptoms as well. Eosinophils, defense cells that fight against intestinal parasites, can lead to symptoms of allergic rhinitis. In summary, 
a more ancestral diet such as paleo or Mediterranean diet can help a lot to reduce symptoms and rebalance the immune system. Avoiding the use of antibiotics or minimizing their damage with probiotics when it is necessary to use them is also a protective attitude. Keeping an eye on intestinal parasites and eliminate them when they are present is also important. But even if we are very careful with our body, we still can have allergies. And why this happens? Well, there's something else you need to know about histamine. Histamine is important to defend ourselves from aggressors, real or unreal, whatever. Histamine is, besides an immune hormone, also a neurotransmitter involved in flight or fright responses. I mean survival responses. So histamine increases in the brain our alertness arousal, but also memorization and learning process of a stressful event. Faced with situations that demand maximum alert, where we are afraid of suffering, where we are distressed someone, where the world is a dangerous place, histamine helps to memorize this stressful event and learn to respond to them later. There is another situation where histamine can rise and cause allergic symptoms. Relieving a difficult past memory by revisiting a place or by going through the specific time of the year when it happened can cause histamine to rise. The allergic reaction. When one of these details reappears, the mind reactivates this mental file and triggers the reactions. Time, space, but also sensory information like smell, taste, touch, image can be mental triggers. Because when two neurons fire together, they can wire together. And then the runny nose reappears itching nose or eyes or so on. Always as a memory or chronic event, because if we never experience it, we have no memory of it. Facing a stressful situation, we can increase our histamine in blood and brain, giving rise to the allergic symptoms in the sensory organs, nose or eyes, most relevant to the specific event, if we leave it before a similar experience. Or we can recall the experience and the levels of histamine will increase in blood and brain, giving rise to the same symptoms. Let me explain better. You will not have an allergic reaction when you leave it for the first time, but when the situation repeats again. For example, when students approach the exam season, they can have an allergic reaction. It depends on each one. Or, for example, when you go to a place where you suffered a lot, where you lost someone. Every time you go through a stressful situation where your mind cannot tolerate again. If you have allergies, improve your diet, rebalance your gut health, and if you suspect of an emotional cause, seek help. Microphysiotherapy is for me one of the most important uh, weapons, but there are other therapy very helpful as well, like hypnosis, biofeedback or EMDR. As you see, we are much more influenced by the food lifestyle and emotions than by the genes, because we are humans, not robots. We are like a body-mind cocktail. Well, that's all for today. See you in the next video.